Hello everyone. Welcome to yet another session of our NPTEL on nonlinear and adaptive control. I am Srikant Sukumar from Systems and Control IIT Bombay. So uh, we are well into the uh, eight week lectures of this course and we are already looking into uh, several algorithm design methods uh, through which we can actually uh, control autonomous systems such as the SpaceX satellite that we see in the background hovering the Earth. Um, now, uh, what we were doing last time was essentially the beginning of uh, the generalization of the adaptive integrator backstepping method. So this was the method that we had um, we had sort of looked at in the week seven lectures, if you remember. So uh, this was this was essentially the unmatched technique. So this was sort of what we had done in the week number seven, where we had the parameter which was actually unmatched with the control, right? So uh, and we had essentially devised uh, how to use the backstepping method. Um, in order to design an adaptive controller for such cases. Now, what we are, uh, we have started already to look at uh, in lecture 8.3 is how to extend it to the general case, right? Because here, uh, everything was a scalar, right? I mean, you had a scalar uh, x1 and x2 and u, and even the parameter was a scalar, right? So now we are looking at the general case of a system where you have an x which is an rn you have an unknown parameter which is also an rp a control which is an rm right and so uh, and and then of course there's an extended state psi uh, which is also the same dimension as the control and therefore is an rm right so uh, so how did we uh, start the setup of this system was that we said that uh, we have this form for the system yeah we are now used to this form uh, for the adaptive integrator backstepping for the general case right i hope all of you remember that uh, here there is one term which is corresponding to the drift the second term which contains the unknown parameter which appears linearly and the third which contains the control which also appears linearly right um, so what we assume is that for such a system where of course the dimensions are stated and the functions are sufficiently smooth, uh, there exists an adaptive controller, which means that there exists a U and there exists a theta tilde dot such that the system has bounded states and some nice thing happens to the um, theta, uh, typically to the uh, error states, right? it's the X states, right? So this is uh, codified in terms of the existence of a, a smooth function V in this case of x and theta tilde such that its derivative is negative semi-definite at least right and from this negative semi-definiteness we can actually conclude uh, more often than not that this function w x theta tilde which is what you have on the right hand side goes to zero as t goes to infinity right this is exactly what we had here you have you had this uh, you had this sort of a system and the assumption was that you had a function v in this case um, let's see in this case the function v is something like this this v1 function right and the derivative of v1 after taking some theta hat dot which is essentially the same as having a theta tilde dot came out to be this quantity which is what is the minus w quantity and we could prove that this goes to zero right and because this goes to zero of course we could prove that you know uh, something nice happens to be x i mean i'm sorry there is no x2 state yet so of course we can prove this goes to zero which means that x1 goes to zero right so that's exactly what we also claim here yeah remember again that we are looking at the 
tracking problem, sorry, the stabilization problem, but the tracking problem would have been exactly identical. Not, uh, there wouldn't be any uh, significant difference in the tracking problem either. Yeah. So now, if we had an integrated state, that is when the u gets replaced by the state psi, right, which is Rn, uh, you, you of course add this i dot equal to u sort of thing here, right? Uh, then what we claim is that uh, this sort of a Lyapunov function, v bar now, which is essentially the previous v with an added uh, backstepping error term, which is norm z squared and a new parameter error term, right? Because if you remember, there was a uh, over parameterization, right? Because of the unmatched states, right? Uh, that is the new parameter estimate is called theta bar, the old parameter estimate was called theta hat, right? And so with the quadratic term in the new parameter error, you can actually show negative semi-definite V bar for the new system. That is the system with an integrator now, right? Now, uh, as you would imagine, because there was a nice adaptive law for the original system, we define a backstepping error state Z, which is the psi minus the alpha. Right, because um, although uh, psi is not the actual control of the system, we want it to follow the alpha because we know that is the good control. So we try to sort of push this towards zero. Okay, so that's what we do. Now, since everything is vector now, instead of scalars, that is z squares and theta squares and theta tilde squares, we have norms. Right, that's the only difference. So now I have z transpose z which is norm z squared, which is essentially this quantity. And then you have sort of a norm squared here, but with a scaling, right? With this, this scaling is simply the adaptation gain, right? That we already know about. Okay? In the scalar case also, we had an adaptation gain, yeah? Even in the matrix case, and now also in the vector case, okay? So, uh, so this is the modified V bar, which will work, right? And this is, again, not very really different. And because v1, if you remember, was the original function here. And so we take our uh, overall Lyapunov function as just this guy added with this, which is exactly what we are talking about now, because this is the backstepping error term squared. And then there's a square in the new parameter error. So square in the new parameter error and the backstepping error squared. All right. That's it. So it's essentially uh, very similar to the scalar case, just taking into account uh, the fact that we are now dealing with vectors. So a lot of uh, norms appear in place of simple squares. All right. Uh, great. So now uh, this is this is it. Uh, so we we essentially use this and. Now uh, we simply started taking derivatives. That's what we had. That's why we had stopped. And so I'm going to mark my lecture right here. So we start our lecture 8.4 right here. Okay. Also remember again that we are uh, looking at the week nine notes. We're not going to worry about it. The purpose of the week markings is simply to uh, sort of uh, help align the homeworks. Yeah, so let's not worry too much about this. Okay, great. So let's take the derivatives for this V bar in order to prove that this in fact helps us uh, claim that, you know, our W goes to zero and, you know, our, our Psi goes to alpha and all that nice stuff. Yeah, okay. So uh, this is the dynamics. So what we do is we now start to write our dynamic in terms of the new variable Psi. Uh, sorry, in terms of the new variable z, right, which is the backstepping error. So x dot was fx plus capital Fx theta plus gx psi, and the psi is simply z plus alpha. That's what we do. And now we also write the dynamics of the second state, which is psi minus alpha. So psi dot is just the control. And the derivative of alpha has two pieces because it is depending on uh, two different uh, quantities and right? two different quantities 
so uh, this is u minus del alpha del x u u and this del alpha del x times x dot which is essentially this guy plugged in and del alpha del theta cap theta cap dot and so that is this with a plus sign so that's what you have here okay that's what we verified here because theta cap dot is minus theta tilde dot and that is gives me the plus sign okay and that's what we have okay so now uh, when i write v bar dot i get again two pieces from this partial which is del v del x times this plus del v del x times a gamma uh, let's see it's not del v del x this is Uh, so I need to check the signs here. So this is actually equal to So V is a function V was a function of X and theta cap. So this term is not this but it has to be del V del theta cap uh, Theta cap dot. So this is minus Gamma X Theta cap. Yeah, so that's what you have. The second term will be minus del v del theta cap gamma x theta cap. I'm simply taking the derivative of v, right, which is a function of both x and theta cap. And remember that theta tilde dot was declared as gamma. And theta cap dot and theta tilde dot are related by just the negative sign. Okay, let's just remember that much, and that's all we are doing. Okay, so second term is not del v del x again, it is del v del theta cap times negative of gamma x theta, and then the second term is the derivative of the second term is just you know this guy. So it's z transpose z dot, and we already have written z dot here. So z transpose z dot is this entire thing, this guy getting plugged in here, and the final term is this so i have theta minus theta bar transpose so i change the s uh, gamma to s because we already have used gamma so you have theta minus theta bar transpose s inverse theta bar dot yeah so i get the negative sign because theta bar has a negative sign here so therefore i get a negative sign here all right so that's it. So it, it looks messy, but honestly, we are just doing careful bookkeeping. Okay, just careful bookkeeping. Now look at this expression for the V carefully right here. If you look at this carefully, I already know a few things. I know that V dot from the previous uh, case when there was no integrator uh, has del V del X FX plus cap FX theta plus GX alpha and del V del theta tilde. I see so here it is written as a function of theta tilde I'm sorry this is uh, this is gotten messy this is actually v was a function of x and theta tilde so this was a mistake here I apologize this was a mistake here so this is fine So V was a function of theta tilde in fact, so that is okay. All right, that was okay. This was, so then the second variable, second partial is in fact with respect to theta tilde. And then this is theta tilde dot, which is just gamma, okay. So if you look at this expression, this guy is actually available here, right? If you look at this, there is del V del X, FX plus cap FX theta plus GX alpha plus del v del theta tilde gamma right so this entire thing is available and so this entire thing can be written as minus w right? and that's what we do and then we pull this piece out this piece is the only thing that's remaining right so if i take this out i have a z transpose uh, and that shows up here okay so this piece is the only thing that's remaining is this piece and that becomes this guy all right this is z transpose g transpose and 
del v del x transpose but del v del x being a uh, del v del x uh, will be since v is symmetric so there is no need to transpose it but if you uh, want you can just use the transpose here no problem okay that's not a problem let's just use the transpose here okay so um, so let's look at this so you have uh, the rest of the terms as is right u minus del alpha del x times x dot minus del alpha del theta cap uh, gamma sorry the signs had to be corrected here this is a plus sign again and this is a plus sign again correct and so that's correct and then that's it this additional term comes in from here right so that's it we have this additional term and everything else is accounted for and then this entire term goes out i mean it's just reproduced here as it is all right great now uh, now you start to see what's the advantage of um, you know you you start to see very soon what's the advantage of uh, this sort of a term yeah because uh, because if you see um, fx theta which is the unknown theta is the unknown has appeared once again okay in the along with the u okay and if we did not have another handle here i would be in trouble okay i would be in some trouble so what do we do we as usual ca cancel as much as we can uh, we um, we can get rid of this all of this great this guy also and this guy also and then we introduce a good term which is the minus kz but then for this term i have to introduce another cancelling term which is not again which is again not the uh, true value of the parameters since it's not known but it is an estimate and a new one that's what we do and once we do that what would we be left with all everything else cancelled out right except for this guy yeah corresponding to which i will have a theta minus theta bar type term okay and that's what is this guy yeah so again i need to be careful about the sign here because this was a plus so this has to be a minus sign okay and so this term yields this guy and this is uh, as it is of course with the s inverse instead of the gamma inverse and similarly the s inverse instead of the gamma inverse here all right so good things happen as we expect right the we have a nice negative term in the z we have a nice negative term w which we know has to be a nice negative term uh, and then we are left with these guys which we know how to cancel right and how do we do that we simply uh, use this quantity to cancel this right and how do we do that so we take theta minus theta bar common and then therefore we have an expression here and in this case it will be s times f transpose del alpha del trans del x transpose times z right basically it will be the transpose of this whole guy pre multiplied by s yeah so that's what it is you have the transpose of that whole quantity pre multiplied by s which is the adaptation gain right so this is the adaptation gain all right so i hope that is these steps are clear see all we did was a very careful bookkeeping and carefully clubbing terms and cancelling terms yeah it's not very different from the scalar case at all yeah so the purpose was to show that this method in fact has a very nice um, vector extension also and also to show that uh, dealing with vector states is not significantly different from uh, the scalar counterparts all right um, great so uh, so we have this nice expression now after we have used theta bar dot 
in order to cancel this guy uh, in order to cancel all the unwanted uh, parameter terms that appear in the uh, v bar dot we do get this nice v bar dot expression right and therefore we can show um, very easily that w and z do go to zero as t goes to infinity and this is of course uh, standard signal chasing plus barbalance lemma yeah notice that for the long for a long time now we have in fact stopped showing these arguments because now we have assumed pretty much that all of you are experts in this since we did it quite a few times uh, and the steps were very very standard right? and therefore uh, we find no further need to uh, keep repeating these steps yeah so uh, what um, so what sort of is um, a little bit of a uh, well philosophical not really philosophical but actually an implementation concern is the fact that we have two different estimates yeah which is theta bar and also theta hat right also the theta hat here yeah in order to uh, you know estimate the same parameter theta yeah and as the number of unknowns keep increasing which is you know rp in this case um, you will of course see that the number of um, excess uh, unknown parameterizations uh, unknown parameter estimates also keeps increasing yeah and this is of course not a convenient situation to be in yeah i mean eventually these are all going to be implemented in a microcontroller uh, and you definitely do not want to load your uh, real-time control system by adding more and more states all right so uh, so that's really one of the critical concerns here and we seek to address it of course uh, but anyway the important thing is even for the unmatched case we are able to uh, design very nice adaptive control loss right and which actually help us to uh, you know deal with unknowns that are not mapped with the control remember this is the way it's set up right now it currently works only when there is the unknown parameter one step above the control yeah so if you have a system like this it's fine right because the control the control is one step below one integrator below if you may uh, from the unknown parameter yeah so this method can also be generalized to the uh, you know sort of the more complicated situation where you have unknowns uh, you know that sort of appear you know in, in several levels above the control yeah and then the way you would do it is to do it sequentially of course right i mean um, this is essentially what is called the parametric strict feedback form and the idea here is that you would think of x like x3 as the control and work with x1 x2 and then so on and so i mean you you move forward further down and uh, similar until you reach xn being the control and then you finally have u as the control itself okay so this is um, of course these details are available in the kkk book which is the kanalakopoulos kokotovich christic uh, adaptive control book which is one of the uh, important key references for this backstepping based adaptive control design in fact the book has significantly more details and significantly more uh, methods and examples than what we do uh, in this uh, lectures i would in fact strongly recommend that all of you do uh, look at that material all right now uh, as i already mentioned uh, one of the big issues is the requirement for extra parameters you know extra parameter estimates right and this is a uh, you know significant constraint when we talk about real implementation yeah typically uh, if you have a hundred parameters for example yeah i mean a, a typical engineering system may have even 500 unknown parameters right and if you're talking about such large numbers of unknown parameters and you have double the number of uh, states required to be estimated so if you have 500 parameters you actually estimate it using thousand states then you can imagine that this is a real concern yeah you can imagine this is a real concern 
so that is the idea that of extended matching design yeah is how to overcome this uh, you know sort of over parameterization so uh, i will not do it i will not start it now in this lecture but uh, the system that we consider is almost exactly identical right that is you have this kind of a setup again we go back to the scalar case because everything is easier in the scalar case in the vector case although it's the same it's just a lot more bookkeeping and it becomes more complicated to explain things yeah so otherwise everything is exactly the same uh, what we'll try to do is do one vector example also at a later point yeah so let's not worry about that too much um, but the system is again the same scalar system that we saw in week seven i mean let me go back and sort of try to match it set. so this is the exact same system if you see these two look exactly identical right and now we want to do extended matching design which means that we do not want to have multiple uh, parameter estimates anymore and just one and that's what you will see in the subsequent lecture right great so what did we uh, look at today uh, we had started the uh, generalization of the backstepping design last time right uh, now until the week number seven lectures we had looked at the backstepping method uh, for the matched case that is when the uncertainty appeared in the control dynamics uh, and also had looked at uh, the case where the uncertainty appeared one integrator level above the dynamics in which the control was present okay now uh, of course the case when the uncertainty appears in the control it can be easily generalized to the vector case it's not a big deal yeah uh, although we did not do that again we can try to do all of this at a slightly later stage uh, now the point is that uh, here we look at a generalization of the unmatched case that is when the uncertainty appears one level uh, one integrator level above the control um, and we want to look at vector states vector controls and vector unknown parameters and that's what we did uh, in today's lecture and also the previous one so we completed the proof uh, we started with the assumption that the first layer integrator has a nice adaptive controller along with a you know um, stabilizing Lyapunov candidate construction and what we can actually show is the construction of the complete uh, candidate Lyapunov function for the system when an integrator layer is added to this and we can also show that you know our backstepping error goes to zero and you can also show that you know whatever your w that is a negative semi-definite function we had from the first integrator layer will also go to zero all right so this is uh, what we have been able to show uh, until today and in the subsequent lecture we will look at you know what is called the extended matching design all right great uh, so i really hope that all of you uh, are with me i know that uh, the bookkeeping part does make things look rather complicated but i hope uh, you understand that it is uh, just a matter of closely following what's going on and not really any uh, big innovation in terms of theory uh, and so um, you know i hope that all of you enjoyed these lectures and you are uh, able to follow what we are doing here in these courses yeah great so this is where we will stop today and uh, i'll see you again soon thank you mm -hmm.